Welcome to the deep dive. We're going way back in time today. Back to the dinosaurs. You got it. We're talking about a really famous fossil site in China. Sometimes people call it the Chinese Pompeii. It really is amazing. All of these incredibly preserved dinosaur fossils. And some even have soft tissues preserved. Like feathers. Yeah, feathers. It's been so important for figuring out how dinosaurs evolved. Especially the link between dinosaurs and birds. Totally. Okay, so we've got these amazingly detailed fossils. And for a long time, scientists thought they were looking at a prehistoric Pompeii. Right, like dinosaurs being wiped out in a sudden fiery volcanic eruption. It's such a dramatic image, isn't it? It is. But some recent research has actually challenged that whole idea. Yeah, a study published in PNAS that's a big deal in science. It is. So what did they find? Well, they use this cool technique called zircon dating. Zircon dating? Yeah, you analyze these crystals in the fossils and the rock around them. What do those crystals tell us? They're like little time capsules. Oh, cool. And they can tell you when the rocks formed. But well, how old they are. Exactly. And what they found was pretty shocking. Oh, no. What? The fossils actually come from three different time periods. Huh. Yeah. Spread out over 93,000 years. 93,000 years. So not a single event like an eruption. Nope. Not even close. So wait, you're telling me these perfectly preserved dinosaurs weren't all caught in some Pompeii-style disaster? No, they were not. That changes everything. So if it wasn't a giant eruption, what was it? How could they be so well-preserved over thousands of years? Okay, so to understand that, you have to look at the different types of fossils they found in the Yixin Formation. Okay, different types. Some are almost 3D, found on land. 3D dinos, got it. Yeah, and often in these really dynamic poses. Like they were running or something. Yeah, like frozen in action. Cool. But then there are these other fossils that are totally flattened. Flattened. Yeah, but with incredible detail, you know. It's still like squished, but you can still see all the little details. Exactly. And those are mostly found in what used to be lake sediments. So we've got 3D dinos and flattened dinos. Yeah. Why the difference? That's the million dollar question. And it might just hold the key to how they died. Ooh, I like where this is going. So the researchers thought, what if it's all about the type of sediment that buried them? The stuff they were buried in. Yeah. Those flattened fossils, the ones with all the amazing soft tissue detail, they were encased in super fine-grained sediment oh, yeah. in those ancient lake beds. The lake bed dinos. Right. And that type of sediment acts like a sealant, you know, blocking out all the oxygen and bacteria. Like a Ziploc bag. Pretty much. Oxygen and bacteria are like the enemies of preservation. So no air, no bacteria, no rotting. Exactly. Natural time capsule. That makes sense. No wonder the details are so incredible, even down to the feathers. But what about those 3D dinos? They were found in coarser sediment. What does that mean? It was grainier, so things could get through it easier. Ah, I see. So they decomposed faster. So no fancy lake sediment for them? Nope. No spot treatment. They're still cool fossils, though, right? Totally. Mm. But they don't have that same level of detail. Okay, so I'm guessing this means no fiery volcanoes. You're catching on. So how did these dinos actually die? Are you ready for this? Hit me with it. The study suggests that a lot of them, especially the smaller ones, died from. Burrow collapses. Burrow collapses. Seriously. Yep, that's the theory. How does that even work? So picture this. You've got a heavy rainfall, maybe even some tremors from bigger dinosaurs stomping around. Okay, I'm picturing it. That could trigger these collapses, instantly burying the smaller dinosaurs in their burrows. So they're just chilling in their burrows and bam. Lights out. Wow, that's crazy. And then those lake beds with the fine sediment. Perfect conditions for preserving those buried dinosaurs. It's kind of ironic, isn't it? Oh, yeah, total. Instead of this big, dramatic volcanic eruption, we've got these everyday things causing both death and amazing preservation. It really changes how we think about the dinosaur world, doesn't it? Absolutely. It wasn't just a snapshot of one big event. It's a record of life and death over thousands of years. And sometimes the most fascinating stories are about those everyday events. You know what they say? It's all about location, location, location. You definitely didn't want to be a small dinosaur living anywhere near a sauropod highway. And not a good place to be. So we've got death by burrow collapse, but what about those bigger dinosaurs? Oh, yes. The missing giants. That's a mystery we'll have to tackle next time. Ooh, a cliffhanger. Don't worry, everyone. We'll be back to solve that mystery soon. But for now, let us know what surprised you the most about this research. Share your thoughts in the comments below. And while you're at it, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more deep dives into fascinating topics just like this one.
We'll be right back with more mind-blowing insights from the Yixian Formation. Stick around. Welcome back. Before we jumped into the comments, we were talking about all those smaller dinosaurs. You know, the ones that got preserved in the lake sediment. Right, after a burrow collapse. But what about the bigger dinosaurs? Where are all their fossils? That's a great question. I mean, these burrow collapses were happening for thousands of years. So there's been tons of big dinosaurs around, too. Exactly. And their fossils should be there, but... They're not. This is where things get really interesting. Ooh, I like it. Interesting. Remember those giant sauropods we talked about? The ones with the long necks? The ones that look like they're straight out of a movie. Exactly. Well, the researchers think they might hold the key to this whole mystery. The missing giant dinosaur mystery. Yep, that's the one. Okay, so we've got these giant sauropods roaming around and... <laughs> What is? Did they like step on all the little dinosaur burrows? Well, it's not quite that simple, but you're on the right track. Imagine a whole herd of these sauropods. Oh, wow. Yeah. Weighing tons and tons, moving through the area. Oh, heavy. Their weight alone, combined with, you know, all the vibrations from them walking. Like a dinosaur earthquake. Yeah, pretty much. That could easily trigger collapses in the burrows of smaller dinosaurs living nearby. So these giant sauropods were accidentally causing the death and the amazing preservation of their smaller neighbors. It's kind of a dark twist to the story, isn't it? A little bit, but it makes total sense. So it wasn't just about where the little dinos lived. Right. It was also about who was walking around above them. Exactly. Location, location, location. And maybe neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Uh -huh, yeah, maybe. This research really paints a much more dynamic picture of dinosaur life, don't you think? Totally. It's not just about a single event anymore. It's about understanding the whole ecosystem over a really long time. We're getting a glimpse into the everyday life of dinosaurs, not just the big dramatic moments. And that's what makes this research so exciting. It makes you wonder what other secrets are out there, just waiting to be discovered. Right. What other seemingly ordinary events led to these incredible fossil finds? It's like we're piecing together this giant puzzle. And every new discovery adds another piece. Speaking of new discoveries, I'm dying to know what you're going to say before we check the comments. Oh yeah, the cliffhanger. Well, if things like burrow collapses can lead to such amazing preservation, yeah. it makes you wonder what other secrets might be hidden in all these seemingly normal rock formations all over the world. What if there are other Pompeys out there? just waiting to be found. Exactly, with their own unique stories to tell. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Makes you want to go out and start turning over rocks looking for fossils. <laughs> Who knows, maybe some of you watching this will be the ones to make those discoveries. That would be so cool. So everyone, if you're inspired to go on your own fossil hunt after this, let us know in the comments. And be sure to stay tuned for part three, where we'll talk more about what this research means for our understanding of the dinosaur world. We'll be right back with more mind-blowing insight from the Yixian Formation. Don't go anywhere. And we're back for the final part of our deep dive into the Yixian Formation. The not-so-fiery Yixian Formation, that is. Got it. It's been quite a journey, hasn't it? It really has. We started with these ideas about fiery volcanoes. And now we're talking about collapsing burrows. It just goes to show that science is always changing. Exactly. New research comes along, new technologies. And we learn more. We have to be open to new ideas. And be willing to change our minds when the evidence says so. Absolutely. This is a great example of that. It also shows how important it is to look beyond the big dramatic events. Sometimes the most fascinating stories come from the everyday stuff. Like a rainstorm leading to a burrow collapse. And millions of years later. We get these incredibly detailed dinosaur fossils. It's amazing what we can learn from those everyday events. It really is. So what does all this mean for how we understand dinosaurs? Well, for one thing, it changes how we think about their environments. Like we're not just looking at a snapshot in time anymore. Wait, it's not just a frozen moment. We're seeing a dynamic ecosystem. With all these different forces at play. Both big and small. Exactly. It's like getting a behind the scenes look at dinosaur life. And seeing the everyday stuff, not just the big events. The struggles, the triumphs. And who knows what other secrets are still out there. What other ordinary events led to amazing fossil discoveries? It makes you wonder what future paleontologists will find. And what other old ideas might get turned upside down. It's an exciting time to study the past. And you never know, maybe some of you watching this will be the ones making those discoveries. That's the beauty of science, isn't it? It's a never-ending adventure. Always exploring, always discovering. And we're all invited to join in. So keep those questions coming. Keep exploring and never stop being curious. You never know what you might find. Well, 
That brings us to the end of our deep dive into the Yixian Formation. But we'd love to hear your thoughts. What did you think of this research? What other Pompeys do you think might be out there? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And keep the conversation going. And if you enjoyed this journey into the world of dinosaurs, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. We'll be back with more deep dives into fascinating topics. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, keep exploring.